Hi, so I have great news. My voice is back and I am no longer ill, which is amazing. You probably knew that I took last week away from YouTube and Instagram. If you don't know this, you should probably join my Discord server. Um, but yeah, I am finally back. I feel so much better and that is perfect timing because it is the final week of the month and you know what that means. It is style study time. Now, full disclosure, today's artist hasn't actually been requested, but I promise you there is loads you can learn from her art because today we're taking a look at the beautiful incredibly stylized semi-realistic work of Raid's art. If you're a style study veteran thank you so so much for coming back I love you and you can go ahead and skip to part one time Samsa in the description below unless of course you're watching the premiere in which case you're stuck with me I'm afraid but if you're new here hi welcome I am so glad you're here because today we're gonna level up your art by like a million percent. Style Study is a regular series we do here on my channel where we take a look at some of our favourite contemporary artists, analyse their work and see what we can learn from it. Keyword, learn. We're not here to plagiarise anyone's work or copy their style. We're only here to learn some cool art tips and tricks and see how we can apply them to finding our own unique art style. I usually structure my style studies in three parts. In part one, we'll take a look at Raid's work, analyse her style and see what we can learn from it. Part two will be a study of one of her original paintings. The beautiful reference I've chosen today is this one. And in part three, we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please do remember to like and subscribe. Comment below your biggest takeaway from this study. And this has been a long enough intro. So whenever you're ready, grab a snack, sit back, and let's dive into another style study featuring Ray's art. Raid is a self-taught professional illustrator from Germany and interestingly enough she also works in collaboration with her twin sister Leffi who is also an incredible illustrator. Raid's work is focused mostly on character portraits and she has worked with Harper Collins as well as created storyboards for the German animated show Simsala Grimms. I know I butchered that name I'm so sorry. If you think you haven't seen Raid's art before, let me show you something. Have you seen this legendary lighting chart? Yeah, you've seen it on Pinterest before. That's Raid. Her beautifully stylized work has garnered her over 429,000 followers on Instagram and over 8,000 followers on Twitter. In the intro to her Domestica course, Raid mentions how her art is all about celebrating femininity and nature with a strong focus on beautiful lighting and expression. Her characters are stylized to look super appealing and I don't know about you but when I look at them they just feel so alive. Like there is so much depth and soul in their eyes and the expressions on their faces feel just so incredibly human. Even in a painting like this one, where there are no human characters at all, there is still something so sentient in the faces of these cats. It's like she packs so much individuality and expression into the face that the rest of the story elements just kind of unfold naturally. Each character seems to be going through their own individual journey and have their own individual life. As an artist, I would definitely say Raid is definitely a person a list. Speaking of lists, here's a list of four key characteristics to Raid's art. I'd say the first thing about her work that hits you square in the face is just how beautifully Raid paints lighting. And what sets this apart from most other art is that Raid tends to somehow make natural everyday lighting look and feel incredibly dramatic. Like here for instance, where it is just overcast light filtering in through the gap between buildings and yet it looks super cinematic. Or here where Isabella is just swinging on an overcast day but it still feels almost poetic. She has a knack for taking everyday lighting that you and I see all the time and almost supercharging it. 
You'll often see warm key lights with cooler ambient light or vice versa. So here the sun is casting orangey yellow spots of direct light while the sky creates a more diffuse blue ambient light. However, the other lighting setup that's commonly seen in her work is the golden hour light. Often regarded as the most beautiful time of day, golden hour is when the sun is about to set, causing both the lights and shadows to appear super warm like we see here. You may have a slightly more desaturated shadow where the greyness of it gives us the illusion of it being cooler toned, but from a painter's standpoint, it is all warm tones. The one common aspect to the vast majority of her illustrations, however, is that the key light generally hits from the periphery of the character. So it'll be situated on either side or above the character, maybe even behind them. But for the most part, the light is almost never directly in front of the character because the illumination is never flat or even. This is what makes the light so dramatic, is the fact that the face is only partially in bright direct light, while the rest of it is in softer ambient light or shadow. And in fact, the key light often creates these super bright, saturated, hard edge shapes around the sides of the character, which is not only a great way to introduce shape language, but it also helps give us a little more information about the form of the character's face, hair and body. Speaking of the face, hair and body, let's take a look at the proportions. The very first thing that strikes you is the eyes. They are large and beautiful and super expressive and large eyes are a classic stylistic choice most artists go for. Having large eyes makes a character look more youthful and since the eyes are considered the windows of the soul, more eyes equals more soul. However, unlike most artists who stylize faces, Raid actually keeps the nose and mouth looking fairly realistic. The nose isn't super minimized and the mouth isn't super pouty or full. The jaw isn't super narrow, but the chin is usually soft and rounded. Plus, the mouth is generally fairly close to the chin, suggesting all the features are pulled slightly low on the head. Again, emulating that baby face look. However, apart from the eyes, these stylized aspects are rather subtle and are fairly realistic, but better. It's like with the lighting that we saw just now, taking reality and improving it just enough that it looks more aesthetically pleasing while still maintaining a sense of believability. Coming back up to the eyes though, they are stylized in very specific ways and are probably the most defining feature of Raid's work. The eyes are upturned in that the outer corner of the eye is almost always higher up than the inner corner. This emulates that cat eye effect, making these characters look super dynamic. However, the roundness of the eye shape is used to show innocence or maturity. So here you'll see this character has much rounder eyes, which indicates a bit of naivete. But here, Toaf has a much more elongated eye, suggesting a bit of an edge to her. In either case though, most of the feminine characters tend to have these dark smoky eyelashes and pointed outer corners of the eye, again adding to that traditionally feminine appeal. In terms of the detail, I'd say the irises are the one part of the face that have the most variation in shapes. There are loads of striations, color variations and specular highlights that really push the level of refinement in the eyes, thereby solidifying them as the primary point of focus. Another huge part of what makes these characters so appealing is that their faces are so expressive. Be it a shy, coy look or a loud, dazzling smile, Raid always makes sure that the majority of the character's story lies in their facial expression, and then the rest of the scene builds up around them. As humans, we are naturally inclined to first look for facial expressions, which sets the tone for our own mirrored response. 
So when you see a character that is upset and crying, you automatically expect the rest of the scene to be rather upsetting. When you see a character looking happy, you pretty much assume the rest of the scene is going to be jubilant. So by painting the character's facial expression to be noticeable and right at the center of the plot, Raid very carefully sets the tone for the entire painting. However, it is just as important to notice how the rest of the scene does indeed match the face. Most of the time, the color palette of the background is harmonious with the colors on the character. So here Zephyr is wearing orange and blue, and that's reflected on Dart as well, and the background itself has massive blue elements. Here the character has a lot of pink and purple elements, and the entire background is the very same. It's like the entire scene is built to echo what the character feels or looks like. However, let's look at the details because this was really interesting to find. You'll see the sharpest details are on and immediately around the character. So here where these characters are in the midground, that is where the details of the birds, the water, the bikes and the trees are the sharpest. As you go further back into the background, the contrast is lower which creates an appearance of much lower details. You do still have edges and definition, but it's much lower contrast. So it feels like the characters are almost building a scene around themselves where it is the most potent where they are and gets a lot more abstract the further away you go from them. However, if the character is in the foreground, it is a whole other story, because now while the details are still sharper on the character, the background is entirely blurred. So here with Peach, she is in fully sharp detail, while the background is completely blurred. Same thing here with this cat being the foreground character, while the background is entirely blurry. Here is almost like the characters are stepping away from the scene. They are so involved in whatever they are up to that the rest of the world seems to just kind of blur out of focus. What an excellent way to convey story. I'm definitely using this in future paintings. And finally, let's quickly look at another interesting aspect of Raid's work, the texture. And it's interesting because at first glance, you might not think it is an important compositional element or even standardized across her work. However, there are a few aspects that I found fascinating. First and foremost, you'll see on the character that the highlights are flat, the shadows are flat, and all the texture is concentrated in the mid-tone. And for the most part, the majority of it lies in the hair. By texture, I of course mean lots of little high contrast shapes lying next to each other. However, I lied a little bit because while yes, there are no textures within the highlight zone, if you look at the hair, the highlight usually causes a lot of texture due to its jagged edges. This again is another great function of the light hitting from the periphery because it creates all these form highlights in the hair and adds a ton of drama. On the face, you'll often see some texture in the mid-tone created by freckles or pores, but just like with the hair, there is sometimes also a bit of movement caused by speckled light. So here, for instance, the light pokes in through the holes in the hat and creates loads of tiny shapes on the skin. Here, it is filtering across the leaves, creating loads of shapes on the nose and cheek. I feel like this detail in particular, with the light hitting in interesting shapes on the face, is such a cool, sophisticated way to just elevate your painting so easily. But to sum up part one of this video, here are the four key characteristics to Raid's art. Number one, the lighting is paramount to her work, and it is a sense of taking realistic lighting scenarios like daylight and golden hour and almost supercharging them. Two, while most of the face is only subtly stylized, the eyes are drawn to be large and angled with dark lashes and lots of specularity. This adds a lot of depth and soul to the face. 
Number three, the story in each painting starts with the expression on the character's face and then builds outwards, getting more abstract as you go further away from the character. And four, the textures are mostly concentrated in the mid-tone, but you'll often see some interesting small shapes created by bright areas of key light that hit the hair or filter onto the face. For our study today, this is the beautiful reference that I've chosen. It is, of course, Jinx from Arcane, which I did a video about many, many moons ago, but I just couldn't resist this reference. I struggled from the very beginning of this study, trying to get not just the proportions, but the expression right. There is so much subtlety in her face here, especially in the eyes and the mouth, that it took me several tries and iterations to get them just right. This is also the point where I realized just how low the nose and mouth are in the face. I then flattered in the background and skin, hair and clothing, each on their own layers. I like to do this first so that everything I paint after this can be clipped to the respective flat layer, meaning we're always coloring within the lines. I then moved the reference to my other monitor and began rendering. What was really surprising to me was how subtle the value shifts are in most of the face and then how significantly brighter the warm key light is. Like if you look at the color picker on the top right of the screen right now, you'll see me stick to the fairly dark desaturated area of the spectrum for the skin that's in the shade, but then the bright yellow light is at that super highlighty saturated bit. And I think it is so interesting that although most of the face is desaturated, that little bit of warmth adds so much life to the skin so quickly. Beyond this point, it was all just about refinement. Jinx doesn't have any freckles and there was no light filtering in through any holes or anything, so the skin was fairly smooth for the most part. And to be honest, I feel like my version ended up looking a lot sadder than the original. Maybe I do need a therapist. Now, because the reference was on a different monitor and no matter how much I try to calibrate them, the colors do vary slightly between my PC monitor and my drawing tablet. So I did end up having to hue shift a little bit just to better match the reference when I dragged it back onto the same screen. I then switched to Photoshop to use the liquify function because sadly there is no alternative to it. The Critter liquify warp is just too clunky and slow and limited, so this always has to be done on Photoshop. A couple more finishing touches, pencil marks and floating specs, and here is the finished study. For the original painting today, I didn't really have a specific concept in mind, so I actually started with a vague reference. I like the pose in this reference that I found on Unsplash. I've linked it below, but since the eyes are such a big part of Raid's style, I definitely wanted them open. I'd initially thought of doing solid line art, but eventually realized that was a waste of time since it would be painted over anyway, so I just kind of rushed through putting a sketch down. My primary focus for this piece was going to be the lighting. I definitely wanted something very golden hour-y and was definitely feeling the tall yellow grass vibes. Plus, remember the compositional details. Because the character here is in the foreground, the background is going to be fairly nondescript. I just made some vague indications towards some wheat growing in a field and blurred it all out before getting to work on the character. 
I must say painting the background in first was actually really helpful because it kind of allowed me to set the scene. Because I had colours in the background already, I was kind of able to decide where the lighting and colours on the character were going and it actually saved me hours of experimentation. And just like with the study, once I had the base colours and lighting down, it was all about refinement. I wanted some serious brightness hitting the side of her face, hair and body, and definitely a lot of details in the eyes. Plus, remember, the highlights on the hair are going to create those jaggedy shapes, which causes the texture in the hair. I then went in and hand painted some more hair texture and made the contrast in the skin a little more prominent and finally after some colour adjustment, loads more refinement and extra details in the hair, here is the finished original painting for this video. And there we have it, rates are demystified. Like I said, no one really requested this video, but I have to remind myself that this series is as much about my learning curve as it is you guys's. But I do hope you've enjoyed learning with me today anyway. I have linked Raid's amazing, beautiful art down in the description below. Make sure you go show her some love for me. And if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please do remember to like and subscribe and show it some love as well. And if there are any other artists you'd like a style study on, first check out my style study playlist i'll leave it down here in the outro we've done a ton of these and chances are i've covered some of your faves already on the series but in case i haven't feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know which artist you'd like a style study on in the future or better yet come leave it in my discord server so it doesn't get lost in the comments check out my complete extended custom brush kit for photoshop and critter which is a great way to support this channel and if you just want to come say hi check out my instagram and discord server all of the links are down in the description below but yeah that's about all i have to say today so thank you guys so so much for hanging out with me i really hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more style studies down here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye